My name is Painter Vladimir Lappet, and I am really grateful that you're all here today, and really another welcome to our special guests. Um, in this session, I'd like to introduce Commissioner Kathy Lee, Patty Diallo, and Reverend Dr. Patrick Dugan. Just some like uh, ground rules. First, if you have a cell phone, if you can please put it on silent um, or turn it off if you're so brave. And um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be sitting here with just uh, two signs, so we know, so we can follow uh, um, the times, so we can go move on to our next session in proper time. Each speaker is gonna speak for about ten minutes, and. Um, Hopefully, <laughs> and uh, then we'll move along with the conversation. Again, thank you so much for being here on this beautiful day, really talking about some of the issues that affect our soul. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm used to the response. <laughs> I'm very honored to be here with you today in this uh, very special and very different kind of setting. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to stand up because the folks in my church said I should stand up. They, they think they like me better when I stand. I guess if I was on the floor, they'd hate me. This one is just low. How about this? This one is low. This one is better? Okay. Uh, I'm glad to be here with these very wonderful people uh, that are, are joining, joining me and they asked me to lead this session. So, uh, and it's been a very fruitful and enlightening time already to talk about forgiveness. So I'm going to ask a question to Caddy uh, Diallo. And, and then she'll, she'll be a lot more eloquent than I'm being right now. Uh, and, and should I say one of Diallo? Yes. <laughs> Diallo, do you believe, based on your tradition, that we have a choice between passing our anger or bitterness down to our children or up to God? I think that's an easy question for someone who has been in this the experience that you have had. Does anger in your tradition block a connection to God and block us from being holy messengers of joy and compassion in this world? Good afternoon. I'm also going to stand like you. Thank you. Um, it's a very interesting question. Having to go through the loss of my firstborn and going through my agony and grief and setbacks. I think I would not be here had not been for my faith and the support I received. Like I said moments ago when I was talking, it is not about what happened to us that counts, it's what you make out of it. If you try to keep the anger and the bitterness with you, because of experiences that you have had, I believe that will be the destruction of your spirit. Because there is nowhere in the world someone can, can heal without letting go. If you keep that bitterness and the anger in your heart, it's becoming, it will become like a cancer it will eat you up and you might not come out of it. You will stay there and you will be lost. So my faith play a major role in helping me to process my grief. First, the acceptance of my loss and then processing my grief 
and then embark on this journey of healing. Takes a long time. Took a long time for me to get there. But that's okay. Because what I lost is for a lifetime will never come back. Some people will get there quicker than others. For me, it was just too much of an impact on, of my life that needed for me to take time and process. Because the one thing I think would be bad is to try to force things in nature. You have to understand that we are all human. It's okay to be angry when you are in grief, but it's also a blessing if God guide you towards coming out of your grief without being bitter. So I can say taking our anger, our grief to God is the best thing. Because God takes care of the unseen things. God heal us. God help us. Whenever we are in pain, in agony, we pray to God. We are multi-faith representative here. A Muslim. Some are Christian. Some are Buddhist. Some are, you know, like the rabbi who's telling me. We all are interconnected to the one God. We will get there, but the, des the route to get to the destination is might be different, but we are all seeking that inner peace. I am at peace. It took me for a while to get there, but thank goodness. I pray and God help me. It is not from my strength. We are all human. We don't have the strength. Only God can give us the strength. Forgiveness is a gift that is given to us, not in the same way, in a different way. For me, speaking helped me to heal. It was important for me to heal, to go to my journey, through my journey, to heal before I can start going out there and speaking. Overnight, can you just imagine a different continent? What happened to Amadou, and I had to come across the ocean and get here. And also, the other difficult thing I had to deal with, frankly, was the situation in which my child was taken away from me. And the reality of the society here, what people have, were going through before Amadou. So I have to absorb all these things. So I had no time to grieve. Physically, personally, I was grieving in public. That was difficult. When I go to speak, people sometimes ask me, where is the anger? And I said to them, I don't have any anger. If I have anger, I will show it because I'm entitled to it. But thank goodness, God did not led me to that place. God guided me and also my foundation, my heritage, um, helped to play the measurable in helping me to heal without anger, without being bitter. Because if we are bitter, then it is like drinking poison and dying slowly. We pray to God that when we confront this lifetime situation, that we will be guided by faith so that we can heal. So forgiveness for me, it is not about forgiving somebody, it is about me. Letting my soul process this and give me room so that I can do what I'm supposed to do for my mission for my child legacy. Wow. So, and, and probably most of you remember 
Amadou Diallo story how he killed uh, by police. And, and a lot of people don't know that a professional police force, the whole notion of a professional police force, grew out of um, um, the need that places felt to, uh, to uh, patrol former slaves um, and, and ex-slaves. And so when, when we see the, the, um, uh, the, the numbers of African-American males who are killed, and many people think it's new, and all of a sudden it's new, that it's not new. It is, a, it is a reality that has been a part of this country for hundreds of years. And out of the tradition of lynching that uh, scourged and was a, a fear among, uh, to keep uh, African Americans uh, in line. It was always a, a scare tactic. So my question to you, Ms. Diallo, as you see the, the sort of same repeated act, some of them more atrocious than others, some seemingly having justification, some just totally um, have without any sense of, of, of reason. Um, you know, I, Maya Feldman talked about uh, visiting the church in Charleston where the, where the nine uh, uh, Christians in the church were praying and, and the young man comes in and kills them. And, or the other acts, uh, the young man in Cleveland with the toy gun just shot. What, what, how, do you, how do you watch those? What do you see? And um, what is your sense of where we are, the, 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 the mothers and fathers of these, these children and young people, families of these young people? Um, in our country today. Thank you. Um, first of all, that is my struggle. Um, it's my mission to help educate people about the issue of bringing police and community relations so that we can prevent something like this to continue because as I said, so many tears, so many victims. And I like to believe, if you look at the statistics and all these number of people who have been killed by law enforcement, I do not believe that all of them have done something wrong, even if not all of them are innocent. I believe you cannot say all of these victims deserve to be killed, so there's a problem. And as I go across the country, the young man you just spoke about in Ohio, I communicate with his mom. I communicate with so many moms out there. I will let my thoughts, sometimes we are down, sometimes we cry on the phone. Sometimes we just, we have this kind of uh, connection that help us to, to carry on. When one is down, we reach out. We lift our spirit like that, by communication, talking, meetings. The one thing I hope, and I'm working towards, uh, is to help these moms, first of all, to accept what happened to them, and to process in their hearts to take out the anger and the bitterness so that they can have, their hearts will be clear of the animosity or the heartbreak that they are entitled to, of course, but I don't want this to destroy their spirit. And my other hope through my mission is for our messages to be heard by law enforcement community and to help them understand that we don't want to be their enemy. We want to work with them because in the end, no one will win if this continues like that. I remember when uh, Tamai Rice uh, was killed in Ohio, I don't discuss 
these incidents with my children, but for the first time, me and my two sons, we sat down and they said, we always avoided talking about these cases because we know what happened to us. We know you go out there to speak, but mom, let's face it, this is so hard. Because at his age, Tamayana's age, we can, we can do that. We can buy a toy gun and play with it. This is so innocent. You know, this innocent victim has just been killed for that. They said something needs to happen. So, right now is a defining moment. I know so many people will not like to hear forgiveness, but we all need that. Something needs to happen for these two walls to come together. We have to use ourselves as instruments and work towards bringing these two walls together. Unless we start thinking that way, nothing will change. So I ask you, all of you in this room, to be the agent of change. You can do anything to help us because we are in this together. Yes, we are. Uh, Commissioner Lee, I'm going to ask you to share your experience with, with the group here today. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kathy Lee on behalf of Buddhist City Foundation on Long Island. I feel so privileged and humbled to be here. As your Reverend just asked me, what does a commissioner mean? You know, um, we believe a Buddhist in action. So we're not traditional Buddhists just meditate in a temple or go hiding in a mountain. We believe by doing charity work, we can inspire everybody's love and kindness in your heart. And so this way you can also inspire your, not just sympathy, also your empathy, you know, to help out. And then this way we can cultivate our own habits. So we have four missions. The major mission, one is charity, medicine, education, and humanistic, uh, humanistic culture. Uh, so Dhamma Master Chenyin is uh, my master. I'm her disciple, so that's why I'm commissioner, try to carry her, out her mission. Okay. And talking about the topic, you know, about how do we apply our religious learning to achieve forgiveness. For myself, the basic of Buddhism, you have to believe in reincarnation. I know probably not every one of you believes in that, but that's how I deal with my situation. We all heard about Kadi's, you know, sad and tragic story. I, I thank God, you know, I'm very grateful, you know. But still, every day in my daily life, I have small, tedious things I need to forgive. Not just forgive others, also forgive myself. How do we face that? You know, another thing in Buddhism is there is a cause, a reason, and there's effect. What you see today, you know, so like a seed and fruit. As I earlier shared with the other room, if something bad happened to me today, you made me angry, or made me dislike that person, or even hate that person, first, I had to review myself. I know, that's it's easier to say than done, but that's a thing I, I'm practicing. I force myself, you know. I must have done something also to, to hurt the people or make, make him or her angry. So I read to myself, how can I improve myself to be better next time? Try not to step on his toes, you know, or try not to cross the boundary. Maybe he or she feel violated, you know, you know or I, I must have done something. If I really Look at from all perspective. I really didn't do anything wrong. Then I try to approach that person. Again, uh, in another room we'll talk about, you know, we also have tried also to educate that person. Maybe he also just wasn't intentional. Maybe my behavior wasn't intentional, but he take it so seriously or personally. So we have to try to understand the situation. Then how can we turn this bad karma? into actually a positive karma. We, the reincarnation is that we, if we, we believe if we don't 
and this bad karma, this life. Trust me, we're going to meet again. Next life. <laughs> Maybe even next 10 lives, you know? <laughs> so, well, we have a saying, let's just say, you know, we, we must have a hundred years good karma, this way. we can be sitting in the same room today, you know, on the same boat or on the same bus. When I married my husband, I told him, we have a thousand years of good karma, that's why we sleep on the same bed. <laughs> okay? So, try to form good karma with everyone. Even now, it's a bad situation. We even said, uh, in Chinese, fan lao ji pu means even the bad situation is actually a turning point. You can turn into a good karma. So, how to forgive someone? Again, really, if you think of it, if you can let go of all the anger and hatred, you are the one who enjoy the greatest happiness. Mm -hmm. Because you let all the weight in your heart go. You feel so relieved. Our master also said, do not use other people's mistakes to punish yourself. <coughs> because then you're the one who suffers every day. You're still mad about the situation. You're still mad about why did he do, why is he doing this to me? But the other party, he might not realize that. You know, or maybe he's actually laughing about it. I just want you to suffer. I want you to be mad. You know, I want you to be like living in hell. So do not use other people's mistakes to punish yourself. This is, a, this is a very good sentence that I learned. So now I keep that in my mind every day, you know. And Again, I mentioned we have mission, right? We have education. So on the one, we have a Chinese culture school. We don't just teach the kids how to read or, or learn Chinese, Mandarin Chinese. We also teach them culture. So about today's event, so I went to school, I asked the teacher, you know, do you have any samples? We teach the kids, you know, from elementary school age up to high school. There's a story to teach those young kids. They use a sample like, if you're angry, you're like a little dragon. You, you can burst fire, you know, from your mouth every day. So if you're, you're angry, you have a little dragon, you just jump around, you know, and then <coughs> even now you're hungry, you want to eat something. But the first thing come out of your mouth is fire. Now that the food becomes a charcoal, you cannot eat, <laughs> right? You, whatever you want to do, you just spread it away. So how you react to the situation? Now you're hungry, what, you want to eat, you know? How, can, how do you get rid of this anger? So now we tell the kids, okay, maybe you should go face the wall for three seconds. Face the wall, first you fire for three seconds, you know? Then you come back. Basically, you try to, we try to teach the kid to calm down, right? Calm down and don't just go, you know, like, you know, like straight, you know, head to head. Calm down and also try to cool down yourself. This way you can get to wherever you want to achieve. You know, we use all these samples to teach the kids. Likewise, we also did the three, yeah, three seconds, like a golden three seconds before you, before you speak. Then, you know, really pause. Sometimes really when you're angry, the thing you say is the most hurtful. Even you regret it yourself later, but it's too late, right? Yeah. So do not let the anger or hatred overwhelm you. And again, how to forgive, we talk about, you know, all other, you know, and panelists talk about. We, you really have to put away your the degrees, the third, your bad habits. I know we're, you know, we live in the ordinary world. We fight for more promotion, more money, raise, you know, higher title, power. But if you look at, nothing is permanent. Your youth, your beauty, even your family member, one day they will leave you. Your parents, your grandparents, even your kids might leave you before, you know. We, we, we often think we're just on the same train. Some people get off earlier, some people get off later. We should just cherish every moment that we can be together. Like I go to my job, you know, I go to my co-worker, I said, the first day I went to my job, I said to the girl next to me, I said, we must have a better karma before this one. That's why today I'm sitting in the same cubicle with you, right? How come I didn't sit with him? I sit with you. But then now sometimes when I fight with her, you know, I said, oh, I must have stepped on her toes 
many times before, but now she's stepping on my toes, you know? This is a reincarnation, and again, I try to turn every situation into a positive and start with myself to forgive, not the other party, also myself. And but again, to forgive yourself is not giving yourself an excuse. Oh, uh, whatever I do is right. You just have to really seriously examine yourself, your intention, your mind, and try to improve the relationship among you. That's my daily life. You know, I try, still practicing every day. I'm not perfect, you know, but I just hope every day I can be better. Today is better than yesterday. Tomorrow is better than today. Thank you. I'm learning so much listening today and, and to Commissioner Lee and Mr. Diallo. Um, so I want to make the, uh, the uh, forum open to you. And perhaps there's a question or a thought. Yeah, I'm going to I, uh, my uh, question is for Ms. Diallo. So I want to thank you guys both for being here. Um, my question actually relates to the lecture before this because uh, Ms. Diallo spoke for a while and there was a gentleman at the end that came in with what I thought was a contradiction because uh, Ms. Diallo made all the same points about forgiveness and the gentleman at the end came and said that, well, it's important to understand though that it's not always uh, okay to forgive if that other party hasn't changed his behavior. And I thought that was a big contradiction and um, you know, I, I, that was the only time I heard that theme throughout these two lectures. And I just wanted to ask Ms. Diallo again her opinion on that because I don't think she, had, she got to respond to that, you know, to that uh, statement. Thank you. Um, you know, we are both having the same the question about how we understand forgiveness. And I guess the rabbi was saying that in the way I understood his, um, his uh, uh, comments were, it's not necessarily always okay to forgive if you feel like that person don't earn the forgiveness. However, the topic of this uh, gathering was what is forgiveness? Giving forgiveness even if it is not, you have not been asked to forgive. Or what is giving forgiveness to someone who don't deserve to be forgiven? That was the, the foundation of this if I understood the, the conference. For me, um, as I said, it was important to heal, first of all, because I was in a dark place. Understand the soul because the profound loss that I have experienced was so deep in my soul that I needed to make sense out of the senseless. To process my grief in the public eye. But I have never taken against the officers who caused my son's death. My struggle was how can we change this situation to prevent this from happening again? So, so going back to my question though, if they never change their pattern, you would have still forgiven from day one. Yes, because I, tell, I can tell you why. Um, in my heart, forgiveness is, is for me. You understand? It is for me. It's not for somebody. It's not for them. It's for me. Because if I was in my bitterness and I stay there, what good that would bring to me? I would probably be in the hospital medicated. Right? They would give me some pills to help me sleep and some pills to, to wake up and I would live in medicine. I would be medicated and I would be mentally deranged, you know? So thank God for my faith and my healing process and taking this out of my heart so that I can make room to grow. And I promise my son three things. When I lost him, I said, I will speak 
for you because you, would no longer, you are no longer here to speak for yourself. And I'm going to write about you, our story, so the world will know who you are, not the 41 bullets in the vestibule. And I'm going to honor your dream. Mm -hmm. I up to today, I have given 31st uh, recipient of the Amadou Diallo Scholarship. He never lived to achieve his dream in college, but I continue to do my best. 31 Amadou Diallo Scholarship to young deserving students in my country. So, being productive and changing this into something positive, I think, helped me a lot. Thank you. We have another question. Uh, to answer your question, I'm a, I think forgiveness is to be not like that person. That's why you forgive. Not like that person. That, that, that keeps doing the same thing. Right. Because if you, if you, that's to forgive that person. Because if you don't forgive that person, you probably become that person yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like using their, 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 uh, the, the, the action they did and punishing yourself, like you said. <laughs> I want to thank you all for being here. You are, you are, your hearts are bigger than you are, each one of you. And we are all talking about forgiveness and, and applying it to God. That might, be, that might be, if you believe that, that's fine. Quite frankly, I do not. I believe in the human being and the human soul. And Mrs. Diallo, you spoke about this. It is what we as humans can do for the next guy yes. that we can make our life better. And I bless you for that. Thank you. Thank you. I almost didn't come. I almost didn't come today, but I'm so involved in the temple. I decided to come because the fact that you were using the word forgive. Now you have explained it to me in something that makes me feel better. It's the healing you, it's the making a better <coughs> person of you, for making it. But to me, the word forgive. I guess I was taking it literally. I couldn't. It, it's different how you explained it, and you want to make yourself feel better. But the word forgiveness still has, is jarring me because to me, you're not, we're not forgiving this person. We're just trying to make our lives a little more positive and looking at them a different way. I'm not glad I came up. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say, um, when forgive, it's for us. There is a real... Um, a real value to us to let go of the tension and the hate and the, that darkness. But you know, somebody said, what if, they, what if someone is never going to change? And you can't know that they're never going to change. All you can do is your best to teach them. And forgiving them is a really powerful um, teaching moment. I thank you for being here. I remember your son. We all remember him every single day. Um, I was working in New York City at the time. And um, forgiveness, like you said, is for us. So we're not filled with hatred and anger, but does it not mean to forget? We don't forget. We go forward. We try to change the police departments in the whole country. We try to change the laws. The police officers, we respect them. They try to do the best they can. They are not trained enough. They are not trained in psychology. They are afraid. They don't live in the city. They should be living in the city, county that they work in. Judges must live in the county that they work in. The police will be more comfortable with people of color if they're living among us. And they will know in their neighborhood. They will know the people in the neighborhood. And they will be living in our buildings. I lived 
in Manhattan for 20 years. Not a lot of police officers live in the city. They live in Staten Island. They live out in Iceland. I'm friends with a lot of wonderful police officers. They need to be part of the people. It's not us versus them. We're all one humanity. So thank you so much for being here. And you know, it's. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I, I can't. It's hard for me to forgive. How do you? Well, how do you forgive? And what do you suggest? for the police department, which is responsible. Thank you. I'm going to continue to teach the world and show if you look at many studies and practices, his name will be there. And uh, you know, he didn't die in vain. We all have to continue this legacy. So thank you so much for sharing the story with us. And uh, of course, we all remember Amadou and what happened. Um, I agree with you that forgiving is very powerful for yourself. But I also wanted to raise uh, one other point that, uh, that I find. I find forgiving somebody that has wronged me much easier than forgiving myself for something. I find that very difficult. I always struggle with forgiving myself. And I talk, I've talked to a lot of people, and I think a lot of people struggle with this more <coughs> than with forgiving somebody else. So. Yes. 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 so, you are very human. <laughs> um, you know, with the questions that are coming, you know, there are volumes written on the ethics of forgiveness and whether and the de deserving forgiveness or not. I mean, a lot of people have written on There's a lot of ink and wasted or used to, to try to explain it. Um, I think in terms of forgiving ourselves, um, a lot of that has to do with, and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'll take this in, in love, a lot of it is is pride. Um, you know, I say this at, at church sometimes, you know, it is, it is, sometimes we feel like our sin is so big that not even God can forgive it. Now what we're saying when we think that is seven billion people on the planet have sinned smaller than we do. It's kind of a that's an interesting thing to think. Uh, and probably because we, 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 we're in ourselves, so we see us and we know all of our stuff and what we've done. And it seems terrible because we're good people. Um, and so it's magnified in our minds, our own shortcomings. You follow what I'm saying? And that's what makes it harder to forgive. But in the context of all the things that go on in the world, um, um, that ought to help us to see that perhaps the thing we think is so, so terrible in us is common to everybody. And just to understand that, that we're, not, we're no different. You know, our, the things that we do, the ways that we stray, is common to everybody. And if we can grasp that, then it's a little bit easier to, to say, well, maybe I can forgive myself. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, but it, it's, an, it's a tough thing for all of us, and, and, and I thank you for, for, for sharing that. Um, I'm well aware in the, uh, in the theistic traditions uh, of Judaism and Christianity and Islam that um, individuals are regarded as having free will. But I can't help believe, uh, can't help but think that given that all of you, certainly you two, are very large in a, in a belief system, a, a theological uh, belief system uh, uh, related to God. And I was wondering in what way, if at, if at all, you feel that the problem of innocent suffering, which is really what you have to, have, had to submit to, whether that has in any way um, forced you to rethink your relationship to God or to the transcendent in light of the fact that it, it appears so unjust what occurred 
It's really, really right out of uh, the book of Job, kind of uh, innocent suffering. Thank you for the question. I think if um, the innocent suffering that you describe here, I think it only did that what it caused me is to bring me closer to Allah, even closer. Because I remember um, thinking about my, my son and his, the way he lived his life. He was so humble. And I remember seeing this young man at the age of 20, 21, reading the Quran and actually crying. He would cry, his tears would come that run down his face. And his younger sister, Laura, would say, look at him acting like um, Imam or something. What's wrong with you? <laughs> he would look at her and say, I'm sorry because you don't understand what I'm feeling. So to think about him and his life ending that way, um, I would say that helped me to contend, not to be angry, actually, to think about his the spirit, the way he touches so many people. And I believe that when he was killed also, he brought people together, all religion, all faith, pray at the same time for this child. So there's a purpose, there's something, there's a reason why he was taken away from me that way. So if I think like that, this brings me closer to my faith and to Allah. Also, yesterday on Friday night, I shared this. I said, um, the what if. Suppose that night, traffic lights stop these cops in the car just for extra five minutes. Suppose my child, when he came home that night, he was tired and also he said he was hungry. He, would, he decided, okay, I'm hungry, but I'm going to take a little snack and go to bed. But then he went out because he wanted to get something to eat. So definitely when I pray and I th think about that scene, I said, even though it's hard for me to accept, it meant to happen. Their path will cross that night, that way. So if you think that way, you would go to a spiritual, spiritual moment, and then you, they can bring you closer to your faith, I think. That helped me also to process the situation. So you can see how it can go the other way. Yes, right. yes. You want to raise his edge at that moment. So, I'm a Protestant, and, and the Catholics have this thing where martyrs, martyrs are revered. Um, and they're revered because it's a gift to suffer in a way that Miss Diallo and her family has, and to go the way of being closer to God to forgive with, and I just feel her glow, I'm just in awe, just sitting here. Um, um, that, she, you're a special person. And to, I think you're right, many people are bitter, hold bitterness and hold um, unforgiveness for a lifetime. I've seen it, I, I, I've known people who go to their grave, relatives, in, you know, somebody stepped on somebody's toe, maybe when they were three, and at 80, they're still angry with each other and they go to the grave. I've seen it. It is not everyone that can use a tragedy and allow it to elevate them to a new place. So uh, I'm, I feel privileged to sit here and to hear because it, 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 is, it, is, it is not common. But that's why we, we become religious. 
because we want to be a higher level of being than what our baser selves how we would respond, isn't it? We, we want to know, we want to be close to that holy so that we can we can become a person who's who, who overcomes the things that, that will hold us down. So yes, I think it is a, a, a great thing and I think it is a challenge to all of us to try to live a life that we can truly forgive. It, it's understanding that, because I so much agree with what Ms. Kiala said, that forgiveness really helps you but in helping you to really release that hatred and bitterness, it transforms the world. It transforms others. So. Um, I, we, uh, I want to add just one little thing. I did not um, come to that quickly and easily. And I have to say, the word forgiveness sometimes is problematic. I'm in the spirit of healing. I'm at peace. And um, I may not necessarily be in the same room with the officer and say, I forgive you. But if it come to that one day, it will happen. However, it's important to know that I have never felt bitterness against them. When I said forgiveness is for me, is letting go that anger, that bitterness, clearing up my heart so that I can continue my mission. But the forgiveness itself is a process. I'm not there completely because we have to be honest to ourselves. But I'm on the journey. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. I think we have time for just one more question. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Eric Sun, and um, thank you uh, for being here, Mr. Diallo. Um, I'm glad to get an opportunity to uh, speak to you right now. Um, I came in with my wife today. Her name is Elisa. I've been a New York City police officer for the last 16 years. Wow. And um, I've been working for the last four days because of protesters uh, of the city. And I'm glad to be here, even though I haven't really slept or seen my family. <clears throat> but I want to just uh, ask you one quick question. Um, have, you, have you ever spoken to the officers that have taken your son's life in a sudden fashion, in a way unexpected? Have you ever spoken to them directly and asked them why they did what they did that night to your son? That's my question. Um, and I wanted to tell you that because of one of the reasons I came to the police officer is to protect the city of New York, wow. to serve the people of New York. And I never leave my house, walk away uh, into work any day to hurting anybody. That's just me. I can't speak for anybody else, that's just me. So I just wanted you to know that personally. And um, it's an honor for me to speak to you today. And I hope you can go through your journey and find forgiveness and peace. Thank you. Wow. First, of all, first of all, you have made my day. Thank you for your service. I want to come here. I want to shake your hand. <laughs> From my heart, sincerely, thank you. God bless you. The question was if I had the I had spoken to the four officers who killed Amadou and if I have found a way to forgive them. I have never in directly or indirectly receive any communication with the four officers. Something happened recently um, when some of you may have seen the news. In the news, I was on the cover of uh, one newspaper. It happens to be one of them 
each time I'm doing something for my son, like anniversary, organizing something, it will coincide with something related to that officer as well. So the media will call me to comment. And I would say, I don't want to comment. So my belief was the officer should not continue to do the same work because I was afraid that if he had received his gun and go back to the same neighborhood, it could be chaotic because people will say he is the one and he might use the gun and other people will be killed as well. So you see where, where I am. I'm about preventing, preserving lives. But however, two times I was asked if I have, you know, if I want to meet with this same individual. I said, I'm at peace. I'm doing the Arabic Yellow Foundation's work, and I don't want to comment. But then recently, when, we, when I was called, it was this officer has set, helped to save people who were stranded in a boat in somewhere. So they asked me, what do you think is being honored for saving lives? And I said, it's a good thing. I want him to keep doing that, because I want him to change to save lives. And I said, after my prayers, four o'clock, I just finished praying and I'm planning for my son's anniversary. You call for this same officer. There's a message in this. I don't know what it is. I will pray for God to show me, open up my eyes so I can see and I can capture that message that Amadou and Allah sent me to me. Because the two times I'm organizing for my son, it will coincide with the same officer story coming back to me. I said, someday, somehow, I know one day we might meet. I don't know when, but this is something spiritual. This is something from the high, high you know, universe. I don't know what it is. So. To answer the question, we have not met. But if we are to meet one day, I will tell him how Amadou was special to me and his sweet soul and his, his uh, spirituality, his humanity. I will tell them about him. And that's it. Reverend Dr. Patrick Dugan. Our final concluding...